is Hollywood, movie town. Life in Hollywood is just uh, a little different. And in other communities. In Hollywood, screwball characters drive you crazy. And I'll drive you anywhere else. <laughs> I'm a Hollywood hacky. I uh, get some normal people, but I can tell you more about the uh, creeps, the termites, and the phonies. Because I had them all in my cab. For instance, uh... You're home. Who's home? You're home. Where's my house? That's not my house. There's my house. <laughs> no, look, sir. I will. Uh, you know, there's one thing wrong, though. He can't hold his uh, liquor. No. Shame. Oh, yeah. Help yourself. I'll make you a member of the Earth and Fire. There you are, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, how, how do you get into your place, huh? It doesn't matter. Any door will do. Huh? Where, where's your bedroom? My bedroom is the first door to your left. To the left. Uh -huh. Here we are. Ah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you like a light, sir? No, it's too dark. It's pretty dark in here. Where, where's your light switch? Oh, never mind the light. Turn to the left. Yeah, but I can't see a thing here, huh? Yeah, I'll find you. I'll find it. Here it is. Oh. I found it. Now, you just aim me at it, and I'll make it the rest of the way myself. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Ungrateful. Oh, no. Next thing I'll be seeing us flying saucers. It's only me. You sure you're not your brother? Figure it out yourself. Oh, no. Not again, pal. Not again. You hang who else? Hey! What's going on there? Okay, what's the trouble? Bachelor's convention. All I want him to do is to push me through that door. Seems simple enough. All right, Cabby. What's the beef? No beef. The guy just had a little too much to drink, that's all. You know how it is. Oh, you're insinuating I'm intoxicated, huh? Well, I want you to know something. I can walk a straight line all the way to Paris. Come on, sir. I'll help you. You, uh, you better not, officer. Funny about this, you better hang on to him. Yeah. Oh. Let me see your identification. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, what a night. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it for these two-bit tabs. Even my ulcers are getting ulcers. Well, anyway, now I can go home and get a good day's sleep. Buttercup. Who'd you think it was, you dope? I, I keep forgetting you, not yourself till after that first cup of coffee. Come on, precious, I'll get it for you. Come here, dear. Lamb. Sit over here, Lamb.
Well, what are you looking at? Huh? I, I see it, but I just can't believe it. Amazing stuff, that first cup of coffee. Did it do anything for me? Nothing will help you. <sighs> well, good morning, dear. Well, where do you think you're going? Why, to bed. It's almost daylight. No, you're not. Oh, but Pigeon, you, you know how the daylight affects my eyes. I'm like an owl. I can't see in the daylight. That's what I get for marrying a night hacky. You got me on a night shift. You said the, the tips were heavier. Don't contradict. That's one of your worst faults. Always contradicting people. Well... Whew. Well, good morning, dear. Haven't you forgotten something? What? Oh, <laughs> Oh, no! You haven't cleaned the apartment, you haven't cooked my breakfast, and when you get through with all that, you can look these bills over. They're very relaxing. They'll put you to sleep. Oh, I read them. You'll be surprised how interesting they are when you read them again. Huh? 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 Madame LaBouche's beauty salon, $35? Well, you want me to be pretty, don't you? Oh, but dear, you are pretty. Shut up. Yes, Warden. I mean, uh, yes, dear. Oh, gosh, our grocery bill was never this high. Thirty-five, sixty-three dollars! Well, George and Hilda are coming, and my mother and father. I had to get some extras for them. Yeah, but sixty-three dollars, and this KVR. George is on a KVR diet. Any more questions, Mr. District Attorney? Yeah. Where are your family gonna stay? With us. I see. Yeah, but dear, there isn't even room for me. What's the matter with the floor? You wash it every day. Which reminds me, you better quit quibbling and get at it. Gosh, our bills keep getting higher and higher. It'll work out. I'll get you some elevator shoes. You little runt. I don't know. I, I'm so lucky. I, I, I just don't deserve you. Shut up. And clean up the apartment. Yes, sir. So the, the whole apartment? The whole apartment, and take your hat off! Yes, dear. Lucy, you think I... Lu Lucy, Lucy, dear! Lucy! Lucy, honey! What a... What are you doing? Oh, oh, there you are. Shut that thing up! Yeah, huh? Eh? Oh. Shut up! Shut that thing up! Oh. What happened? Where did everybody go? Oh. Oh. Where to, mister? You don't have to poke me, just tell me. What did you say, Clarence? I merely said, where to, mister? Oh, getting personal, huh? No, sir. Well, just pull out and keep driving. Roger. You know, uh, you know, it would help if you just give me a hint where you want to go. Look, don't get me sore, Shorty. I'm a very nervous individual. 
Say, have, have you tried wheat pills? You know, they're supposed to be wonderful if you're high strung. It's just where they're going to find you if you don't stop your gabbing. High strung. Well, would you like to, uh... Never mind. I'll tell you where and when to stop. Just keep driving. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is not my night. All I need now is a ticket. Hey, will you be my character witness? You won't need any witness. They believe you're a character. Where's the fire, Buster? Fire? No smell anything. Oh, I thought you had an officer. I am an officer. Did you see that light back there? No, Lucy. I mean officer. Oh, a smart guy, huh? I like guys who take advantage of the police. Lucy, if you'd spend more time watching the roads and signals, and less time trying to be funny, we wouldn't have so many accidents. Officer, I was watching the road, honestly. You can ask the gentleman in the back. I'll do that. Hey, there's nobody back there. Are you kidding me? Huh? He was just there. Did you look under the seat? Look, I'm not going to give you a ticket this time. You get out of here and get out of here fast before I get good and mad. Thank you, officer. Yes, sir. Hey, listen, Harry. This thing is a snap. This can't be such a schmo. Even if he had two heads, he couldn't find his eyes. I make like I ditched the ice under the back seat, so we hang the heist in the cabbie. What are you talking about? Lefty's got to believe me. What else can he do? Look, I'm not afraid of Lefty. Look. All right, look. You want to come in with me 50-50, or you're still going to go for that three or four-way stuff? Huh? Well, let me tell you about it. Look. Oh, what a nice piece of ice, Harry. Mm, a beaut. Oh, there's about ten diamonds and five emeralds, six rubies. Listen, will you stop worrying about Lefty, or do I have to call some other fence? Look, all right. I'll be over with you in about five minutes. Then you and I can figure out a way to get... All right, Harry. Look, I'm coming right away now. About five minutes. All right. Good. Now, listen, Lefty, don't go blowing your cork. This cop sticks his nose in the cab. I've just got to ditch the loot. It wasn't very smart of you, Onslow. Was it, Butcher? Tell me, Lefty, what was I going to do? This cop catches me with the hot ice, nobody gets any of the gravy. Did you get the number of the cab? Sure, 222. Two, two. What do you think I am, dumb? We won't go into that. You sure you could spot that hacky again? <laughs> I'll never forget that guy's puss. He's got one of them mugs that grows on you. I wanted cash for the loot for a little flyer over the border. I'll tell you what I'll do with you, Onslow. I'll give you a chance to redeem yourself. <laughs> That's decent of you, Lefty. This is your private deal. You get the loot or the cabbie, if you know what I mean. Oh, I know what you mean, but suppose this cabbie skips with the ice. That's your problem, Onslow. You stash the stuff. You get the loot or the cabbie. Be back here in an hour. Otherwise... Butcher better go along for company. Just about here, I jumped in that monkey's cab with the hot stuff. He should be along here any minute. We've been waiting long enough. There ain't no law says he has to. I'm not going back to Lefty without him and the ice. There he is. There's our baby. That's an admin. Easy does it, Butcher. That boy might have a heater. You take him from the back. I'll go from the front. Let's go. I need the practice. Guys, don't you try anything funny, Junior. We've got heaters on you. Oh, you don't need heaters. I can close the windows. It's just as warm. This guy's for real? Keep going. You're where to, gentlemen? Keep going. You know, you're in a rut. What'd you do with the stuff? Stuff? Who do you do business with? Oh. Well, Tiny Tim Market for meats and Big Bob for groceries. But how my wife can spend $63 for groceries? I'll never know. Do I go to work on him now? No, not here. We'll take him up to Lefty's. Tiny Tim for me. Turn left the next corner. Yeah? It's me, 
Lefty, Lefty, we got the rat. Chief, Chief, fellas, this is a lot of fun, but I haven't got time to join a fraternity. We try to make a break for it. We got him right in the nick of time. Sit him over here. I don't want to waste any time. Now, who are you working for, kid? Well, actually, Lucy, but the cab company pays me every week. I'll tie him up. I think this guy's violent. Yeah, fellas, I wish you'd take this off my eyes. I'd like to see where I am. I won't tell anyone, really. <laughs> Honest. Huh? Take off the blindfold, would you? Thank you. Oh, put it back. Put it back. Did you search every corner of the cab? All over. No sign of it, eh? Why don't we give him the treatment? That'll loosen his tongue. Oh, it's not that. It's my back's been giving me a little trouble, you know. You're back? Yeah. You mean like here? Yeah. Is he ever... Hey! Look, kid. We'll go easy on you if you just hand over the ice. Won't even ask you any questions. Just hand it over. Ice? You heard me. I'm with a cab company. We don't handle ice. Now we're getting somewhere. Who handles it? I think it's the Los Angeles Ice and Coal Company. I told you. He's a very shifty bird. He's been playing dumb all night. Can I start educating them now? Relax, Butcher. I'll tell you when to go. Now look, Jack. You're just the same to me, dead as alive. Jack, someone else come in. Did you frisk him? All over. What'd you find? Contest blanks. Contest blanks? <laughs> I never saw so many contest blanks in all my life. Say, say that cigarette. Smells good, huh? No, will you take it away? I don't smoke. <coughs> what is this, a practical joke some guy's playing on me? Joke? Did you hear the one about the traveling salesman? The one uh, I... I... He... Come on, you. Sing. <coughs> Should old acquaintance be forgot? I, look, fellas, I don't want to join a club. Can't I get back to my work, huh? What did you do with the stuff? The stuff? Yeah. I'll cut you in for a slice if you tell me what you did with the ice. Now, what did you do with it? I, I, <clears throat> I haven't seen ice in ten years. We have a refrigerator. Refrigerator? I never thought of looking in there. You want to change places with him? I tell you, Lefty, this milk ain't going to talk. He's probably got it sold already. Why don't we throw him out the window? Hey, can you swim? No, sir. Good. We'll dump him in the river. I'll give you one more chance. Who's handling the stuff for you? The stuff? You heard him. You ain't sunburned. Who are you fronting for? An eastern mob? No, Lucy. She's from the Middle West. Middle West mob. Big family. A lot of ice. Shut up. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah? Ah, oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. Well, tell me more. Oh, thanks, Harry. That was Harry the Fence, Onslow. Oh, yeah? Oh, uh, Harry, huh? Well, he's a good Joe, you know. And what's the matter? This guy has got me... What are you sweating for? It ain't hot in here. How do you feel about double crosses, Butcher? That's what I thought. I think there's someone at the door. Oh, you're all right, kid. Your nose is clean. You can run along. Oh, thank you. Butcher, if you want that piece of ice, take Onslow for a quiet ride in the country. And say, Butcher, if you don't like double crosses, you and Onslow ain't going to get along so good. Can I go now? Sure, kid. Thanks a lot. Nice try, Onslow. Come on, we're wasting time. Fellas! Fellas! Taxi! Yeah, hello. Hello, this is, this is driver 222 reporting in. What happened to you? We were going to send out a police alarm. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get to a phone. I've been tied up. Yeah, you see, I... I... Oh, no. Oh, no. Are you right? So you're still here, huh? 
squeal on me, will you? Please, Mr. Onslow, please. Sid, you zombie, wake up. It's time for you to get up. It's dark outside. Huh? Oh. Oh, shoot. Lucy, where'd they go? Who? Those killers. Lefty, Onslow, and the butcher. You've been having those day mirrors again. I told you not to drink so much coffee. You've been lying here shouting all day. Oh, it's not, it's not the coffee, dear. Oh, some people who drink coffee can't sleep. I'm different. When I sleep, I can't drink coffee. Will you get out of that bed? Oh. A dream. <laughs> oh. oh, only a dream. Put you ice. Take it for a ride. <laughs> Are you gonna get up? Yes, dear, right away. Well, if that's the way you want it. Oh no, oh no, oh no dear, please. No, no, the blood rushes to my heart. No, I'll get up. Well, I'm going to sit down here until you do. Oh, you slept with your shoes on again, huh? No, no, it got cold middle of the day, so I put them on. Ah. What kind of a day was it? Oh, a bright, nice, sunshiny day. Sunshine. Ah. I remember the sunshine when I was a kid. I used to love it. Used to see it, too. Is it still the same? Well, what about breakfast? What about breakfast? Just thought I'd ask. I can't get used to breakfast at 8 o'clock at night. Oh, but honey, this is my morning. You, you want me to get a day job? No, stick to the one you've got. You look better at night. You know, you shouldn't talk that way to me. My psychiatrist says it's bad for me. Your psychiatrist. If you give one more penny to that plumber, I walk right out of here and go to Mother. You can live at Mother's. She's at her Mother's. Shut up. You remember? You remember how we met? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> I used to go to the restaurant where you worked. Yeah, those coffee and eggs. I'll never forget your coffee and eggs. That's why I married you. Coffee and eggs. Haven't tasted any since. I told you I wanted a man who would make me his idol. Mm-hmm. You've been idle ever since. No, I do all the work around here. I do all the work. I get tired, real tired. Well, I'm tired of hearing how tired you are. Now, go to work. Mother, father, Hilda, and George are wiring me from Yuma when their train comes in. Oh, that's zippy. I want you to call me every ten minutes so I can tell you when to meet their train. George, that deadhead. A deadhead is better than none. You say such things, and then you then you wonder why you get a swell head. I... Now stop dilly dallying, or you'll be late for work. And you haven't done the lunch dishes yet. Oh, it'll only take a minute. Yeah, well then maybe you can do the wash too. Gosh, if we could only come into some real money fast, like you know, from a contest, like play and win on the radio. I've been trying for a year to get on, but they just won't call me. There you go with those crazy radio contests again. I warned you, if you don't stop talking about them, I'll... Hello? Yes, this is Main 6533. What? Where's the Liberty Bell? Huh. Why don't you call the lost and found? Lucy, who was that? Ed Smiley. Ed Smiley, me from radio? I don't know. He just asked me some stupid question. Stupid question. The answer to that question could have brought us $500. Stupid question. Funny. Hello, Mr. Smiley. Hello. Hello. Well, who is Ed Smiley? Only the master ceremonies on Guess and Collect. That program's almost as important as Play and Win. There you go with those contests again. I warned you. I could have married somebody normal, but I picked you. I wish you'd stop it, Lucy. It'll be impossible to talk to me. Look, you're 15 minutes late. Oh, yeah. Gosh, I know about my time. Don't it. tell me you slept in your clothes. Yeah, well, I told you it got colder in the middle of the day. Oh, well, don't forget to call me every ten minutes so I can let you know when the train gets in. Yes, Sergeant. Uh, yes, dear. Sorry. Oh. Uh, I bet you forgot. Forgot what? Oh. Don't tell me you're going to start with those bye-bye kiss routines. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. -uh. Our anniversary. Tomorrow we'll be married one week. Fifteen minutes late! Hey, you! Oh. Hey, Maxie! Hey, stop! Nick's a 
black of bricks. Turn to the right and turn to your left and walk with it. Where do you think you're going? Going? I'm going to be a papa. What's the matter with you? You don't understand nothing? Quick, hurry up. Next to black, turn to your right and then you turn to your left and you go up with him. Hey, Bambini, something awful has happened. I never forgive myself, and it's all your fault. My fault? I whistle like a cop. I lay down in the car tracks. I kneel in my knees, and I yell like a crazy man. Nobody, nobody stop. And now, my poor Josefina, she has a baby on the front porch like the last time. Come home, Papa, come home. Mama said to come home. No, no, don't tell me, please. Don't, don't look at your father's face. I'm no good. Not the fit to be a father. Each time I promise something to Josefina. It's all right, Papa. Mom, this is not time yet. Not time yet? You sure? Plenty of time, Papa. A week, maybe. Uh, you know, fool your father, huh? You sure? We're not sure, Papa, but Mama is. Well, Mama ought to know. Go. Go on now, children. Go. Hey, excuse me, please. I'm sorry for all the trouble. Arrivederci. No trouble. And good luck. Luck? I got a fine luck. I got the six children, and pretty soon, seven. Oh, good. Good work. <laughs> thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Oh, my gosh. I'll miss playing win. Do you need money? Are you kidding? Do you get up in the morning and feel that the whole world is crumbling about you? Why not drop into any of the 50 friendly offices of the Tickle to Death to Lend You Money Company and browse around? And now, your favorite quiz show, Play and Win. This is Hollywood, capital of the amusement world, where anything can happen and always does. Where fame and fortune wait for you and you. And you, if you are one of the lucky contestants chosen tonight on Play and Win, $1,500. I guess you could all use $1,500, couldn't you, folks? But now here's the lucky little lady selected from our studio audience to try her hand at the grand prize of the evening. 15 beautiful, brand new $100 bills. A nice big hand, folks, for the lucky contestants. And what a very pretty lady it is, too. Step right up, my dear, and tell all the wonderful people out in the studio audience what your name is. Mary Thomas. Mary Thomas, a very pretty name for a very pretty lady. And uh, is it Miss or Mrs. Thomas? Mrs. Thomas, Mrs. Charles Thomas. And where do you live? Winona, California. It's a little town about 60 miles from Fresno. Well, that's just fine. And uh, is your husband here with you tonight? No. Uh huh. No. I see. Stepping out on the old man, huh? No. I'm a widow. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Thomas. Tell us, how long has it been since you lost your husband? Well, Charles was killed right after the war. He was a Navy pilot fighting in the Pacific. His group was on its way home when one of the planes crashed. His plane. Well, that certainly is a shame. Tell us, Mrs. Thomas, do you have any children? Yes, one. A boy. And what's the little boy's name? Charles. Of course. Named after his daddy. And I'll bet he's going to be an airplane pilot when he grows up, just like his daddy was, huh? Well, I don't know. You see, his eyes aren't very strong. That's why I'm here doing this, to get the money for an operation on my little boy's eyes. There's a doctor here who's had wonderful success with cases like his. He'll make Charlie's eyes just as strong as the other little boys and girls. I know he will. Well, that's certainly a worthy dream. And you came to just the right place to make your dreams come true, Mrs. Thomas. Just dip your hand right into the crystal bowl and see what play and win has in store for you. Now, you understand, ladies and gentlemen, that each contestant selects her own task. Not even I know what it is until I've read it. All right, just one now, Mrs. Thomas. Is that the one you want? Are you sure? All right. Now, you understand, Mrs. Thomas, that you must complete this task, whatever it is, before play and win gets off the air. Do you think you can do it, do you? Well, I don't know. It depends on what it is, I guess. Well, I'm so excited, I can hardly make my fingers behave here. Here, Mrs. Thomas, maybe you better open it yourself. Yes. Let's see. What time is it? Oh, as late as that. Well, you have 30 minutes and 8 seconds left. Here, Mrs. Thomas, let's see what you have here. Oh, oh, this is a tough one. But a little lady with your pluck and determination can do it, I'm sure. I'll try. That's a girl. And now, I suppose all you nice people out there in the audience would like to know what it is the little lady selected from the crystal bowl. Well, don't be so impatient. I'm going to tell you. Hey, 
Sid. Hey, you got business. <laughs> what are you allergic to? Uh, newspapers. Newspapers? Everybody's got trials and tribulations, eh? What's yours? Station 3-1, please report in property, driver. Station 3-1, driver 222, known to people who give them half a chance as 222 Divine. Please report immediately to the Park Manor on Melrose, an apartment hotel. Please see the door now. How can I help but see him? He's always standing there. Oh, don't worry, ma'am. Sid will be here. He's a little eccentric, but he's utterly dependable. Utterly. You don't mean you called for one particular cab driver. Well, my friends, I call no one but Sid. I trust him with my life. Oh. Taxi. Taxi, mister. Sorry, lady. I got a passenger. Hi, Mac. Cut out the victim, huh? This is the lady. But why didn't you tell me you were coming by way of Cucamonga? Hey, wait a minute, Mac. I got her as fast as I could. Look at the tire. It's still smoking. This is Sid, ma'am, whose service is in a misguided moment. I recommend it to oh, you. Oh, thank you, but... Oh, wait a minute. Why is your fig put? I've been three and a half minutes. Oh, please. I'm in a terrible hurry. Okay, lady. I'll take it wherever you're going faster than a phone call. Please, I don't have much time. Well, sure, lady. Okay, okay. Anybody here got a destination in mind? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, do you know how to get to the Sunset Strip? The uh, Sunset Strip? I think I can find it, yeah. Well, just drive in that direction and I'll tell you where to stop. Do you mind if I sit up in front with you? The uh, Strip's quite a stretch of road, ma'am. Any particular place there you'd like to go? Well, I'm not sure. I have several addresses here, but he might not be at any of them. I get it. This uh, particular gentleman we're looking for a no particular place. He uh, wouldn't happen to be your husband, would he? No, oh, no, it's just a man I have to talk to right away. Please help me. I need help very badly. You won't get into any trouble, I promise you. Well, sure, I'll help you. Don't run a fever. But I gotta have a little information. Tell me, where, uh, where does this guy of yours generally hang out? Let's try the Ace High first. Say, uh, who do we ask for when we get to the Ace High? Robert Nash. He's a motion picture producer. Do you know him? I'll say I know him. The signal's changed. Will you go a little faster? We have so little time. What's time got to do with it? I've got to find him by 9 o'clock. Brief me gently, ma'am. Why 9? Well, there's the premiere of his picture at 9. It's an invitational affair. I'd never get to him in the theater, so if I don't reach him by 9 o'clock, you see, I... Well, it'll be too late. Nine o'clock deadline, huh? Yes, and as much sooner as we can make it. Well, don't worry, ma'am. We'll be on a strip in a minute. Oh, no! Oh, yeah. Sorry, ma'am, but there isn't much traffic along here. I'll probably get a fix before another cab comes by. I'm sorry. Oh, it wasn't your fault. Here, I'll help you. You, ma'am? I was an ambulance driver during the war. Fixed a lot of these all by myself. You? Yes. Lucy. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, ma'am. I've got to make a very important phone call. I know. I know, Lucy, dear, but Buttercup... It, yeah, yeah, you haven't received the wire yet anyway, so it doesn't matter that I'm ten minutes late. If you had to be at your Eagle Scout meeting, you wouldn't be ten minutes late. But you find time to dilly-dally away the evening. What? Dilly-dally? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help this woman. She's in trouble. I want to help her find her husband. So now you're a marriage broker, trying to find her a husband. No, dear, not just a husband. Her own particular husband. Yeah, she won't come out and admit it, but I, I know it's the truth, dear. Keep up playing this truth. And I promise you the consequences when you get home. Oh, truth and consequences. You made it funny. <laughs> uh, shut up. I, oh. huh? Ain't you heard it all from this guy since he's been in Hollywood? I ain't trying to pump you, ma'am. I, I, I admire you for not wanting to talk against the guy. But how could a fella just walk out in a nice little woman like you? You know, some of the dames I get who are chasing their husbands, I can understand it. But you... Oldie. Yeah. 
You got any kids, ma'am? One. Look, there's something I'd like to explain to you. You don't need to, ma'am. When you've been a cabbie like me for years, you, you get so you understand these things right off. You might not approve of what I'm doing, Sid, but the reason I'm looking for Mr. Nash, the reason I've got to find him right away, is because of my little boy. He needs an operation, and I don't have the money. Men. <clears throat> they ought to stick their heads on the ground and pretend they're onions. Not all of them, Sid. You're a real nice person, ma'am. If you'll pardon me saying so, and I'll find that guy yours, if it takes me the day after tomorrow. But if I don't find him by 9 o'clock, it won't do any good. Okay. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. Here. On to the ace high. Remember to get in. What'll I do? Don't worry. I'll get in through the back door. You wait here. You're very kind. All in the night's work. Hello. How do you do? Would you like to buy a subscription to the Ladies' Home Journal? Sneaking in, eh? I, Prince Sigorsky, have caught you. Listen, pal, I gotta get word to a man inside. It's a matter of life or death. Yet. Yeah, but look, pal. Yet. Okay, I'll have to talk to the boss. Yet, yet, yet. Like you and me, we gotta help each other out. How else can we stay alive? That is true. Confide in me, my friend. I'm looking for Robert Nash, the producer. You know him? Nash, the producer? Yes, I know him. That's the guy. He's inside, huh? Yet. Oh, look, on the level now. Is one tip receiver to another. The word of the doorman at the Ace High you cannot trust. But I'm speaking to you now as Prince Sigorsky, gentleman of honor. Well, as one gentleman of honor to another. You know where he might be? Tonight is the premiere of his picture, confidentially. A lemon. He'll be at the theater by 9 o'clock. It'll be too late. Where's he live? Never mind, Sid. It's too late. My friend, for such information, you understand. Now, look, I'll tell you what. We've got 13 minutes yet. Do something for me, will you, Prince? Give me the address, and I'll do the same for you someday. Well, I would be doing you a favor, correct? Correct. Then perhaps you would do me a favor, correct? Correct and double in space. In addition to this position, I have one or two enterprises on the side. A little nightclub on the Brea. Uh, don't go there yourself, strictly for tourists, rich ones. They're as good as inside. A chop suey restaurant in Fairfax. Price is very reasonable for your regular customers. I got regular customers. And if times get really bad, a hot dog stand on Santa Monica. For 15 cents, you cannot beat it. That's all? That is all. The address, Prince, the address, huh? The Kimberly Towers. Thank you very much. Pal, you're a real prince. Come on. Come on. Get in the back, man. <laughs> Tell you to sit back in the seat. Oh, Sid, you didn't give me time. Oh, Sid, hurry, please. Okay. Don't worry. Mr. Nash, please. Mr. Nash, please. Mr. Nash didn't order a cab. How do you know? Because he just called down asking me to tell the garage to bring his car out front. Thank you. Uh, his, uh, you mean the, uh, the car uh, is in the garage in the building? Yes. In fact, the attendant is polishing it up now. Polishing? Mistake probably happens all the time. Think nothing of it, my man. I forgive you. Thank you. Don't mention it. Get ready for anything. Before I'm through, it's liable to happen. But then... Hi, son. This the car? Huh? Nash's car, the one they want me to look at. Oh, oh yeah. What's the matter with it? If they knew, they wouldn't have to call on a master mechanic. Hurry up, Nash is waiting outside. Open the hood, will you? Yes, sir. 
Uh-huh. You see that? Just what I thought. <laughs> He's been driving hydromatic when he should have been in super hydromotive. Puts too much pressure on the overdrive when you don't use the vacuumatic along with the super hydraulic. Eh? <laughs> you know, you think a guy with, with money enough don't want one of these, but have sense enough to know how to drive it, eh? <laughs> well, simple enough to fix. I'll tell you what. Uh, <clears throat> start the ignition, will you? Turn it on. Hmm? You hear that? Huh. Okay, turn it off. Okay, start her up again, huh? Okay, turn it off. <clears throat> Sound okay to you? Sure. I didn't hear anything the first time. Well, never mind, son. A bright boy like you, you'll learn. Anytime you want a job as a master mechanic, just mention my name. Gee, thanks, mister. Thanks a lot. Hey, mister, what's your name? I'm in the phone book. Hydra, hydromolic, super hydraulic, hydra, hydra like that. Well, you're four minutes late. I told you to call me every 10 minutes. I'm gonna have to get strict with you. But listen, dear, I, uh, huh? No, I am talking into the phone. I, uh, honey, huh? Oh, look, dear, uh, the woman's in trouble. You gotta be reasonable. Reasonable? Listen, little man, I'm no item in the bargain basement. I don't have to be reasonable. What? Robert Nash? Well, of course I've heard of Robert Nash. Are you trying to get in the movies? Well, you're too old, and you've got that face to contend with. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm not for you. You're not the man I married. You like the wildlife. <laughs> Honey, look, Lucy, buttercup, candy lips. Will you stop crying? I can't understand what you're saying. No, you don't have to spell it. Just stop crying. You know, you, you should be proud of me. I'm a hero. A hero? You mean you've joined the army? Oh, hmm. Well, I told you to keep in shape. Look, honey, I, I gotta run now. Mr. Dash will be coming out soon. Yeah, I'll call you on schedule. Yeah. Goodbye, dear. That's very, very funny. <laughs> oh, your cigarette, my dear. Let me light your cigarette. There you are. So we better get started. We better get on our way. All right, thank you. <laughs> the wind and duck down a little so nobody will see you. But, Sid, they're getting away. He won't get far. <laughs> I disconnected his gas line. Oh, Sid. It's almost nine now. Oh, your watch must be fast. Say, what's the matter with this thing? Sounds like it's out of gas, but the gauge shows that it's full. Well, do something. Uh, trouble, sir? Uh, stick around. We may need you. If you think I'm going to the premiere in a beaten-up taxi cab. It's better than walking. Hey, it's eight minutes to nine. Come on. Oh, if I'd known something like this were going to happen. Say, uh, would you like me to back up here, sir? Never mind. Come on. Yes, sir. Where to, sir? Oh, sorry, Mister. I didn't see your signal. I'm glad to know that you're the kind of a young man who admits his mistakes. Hmm. Let me see. Driver two, two, two. Over. You've got nothing to worry about, young man. Not at all. Taxi cab company is fully insured. You swerve right in front of me. I. Hey. Hey. Hey! 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, I guess our charming Mrs. Thomas failed in her assignment to get Mr. Nash to produce her to our broadcast on time after all. We all feel sad about it, don't we, folks? Only seven seconds left. Six, five, four, three. Three dollars and 85 cents, that's what you cost me. Well, you talked, I thought she was a relative of yours, or the very least, a friend from the old country. Now you tell me she doesn't even live there. Did you never even saw her before? Where am I gonna get my three dollars and 85 cents? Run along, kid, will you? Hmm? And in the future, Mr. McGillicuddy, you can get some other cabbie to run your errands of mercy. I'm... What's the matter, fella? What's the matter? You lost? Hmm? Hey, Matt, check me, will you? You see what I see? Kid's got a century note. By the beard of Caesar, he has! It's for you, Mr. Sid, for helping Mommy and me. I didn't have time to wait and explain to you, Sid. Explanations I can do without. All I want is my 385, and don't think I'm gonna give you change for that phony bill. It's perfectly good, and I don't want any change. Please listen to me, Sid. Okay, go ahead. I got cotton in my ears. Well, in the first place, Mr. Nash isn't my husband. I never saw him before. Oh, great, and I practically kidnapped the guy. I should go to jail for 385. It was a play and win program. I was one of the contestants. She was a contestant. I was the prize. <laughs> Lucy! Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Lucy. Lucy. Lucy, dear. Lucy, precious. Cleopatra. Loved one, say something. Say something so I'll know you're there. Lucy. Lucy, please. The, the operator might be listening. I don't care if the FBI is listening. When I tell you to call me every ten minutes, what do I mean? Answer me. What do I mean? Shut up. Yes, Major. Uh, um, yes, I mean, dear. What? When did you get the wire? The train got in? They're at Union Station? Oh, my gosh. Oh. Hello, hello! Ooh. You think the dope would let me finish? Kill me. Oh, those terrible people. Union Station. Oh. I wish I make it. I'll never make it. Next block, to turn to your left, and then turn to your right, and go up the hill. Oh, again? What's the matter with you? Don't you understand the nothing? Hurry up, hurry up! Everything happens to me. But to you, what have you got to do with it? Oh, I remember you. Just at here, my wife. This time is not the first time. Go, go, hurry up, hurry up! Stop, what is the cap? Stop! Giuseppina! Giuseppe is here with the taxi cap. All, everything. Don't give up for the ship. Hey! Giuseppina. Oh, mia carissima Giuseppina. Don't worry. Giuseppe is here now. He's going to take care of everything. Tell me, how do you feel? Oh, I'm fine, Giuseppe. I'm fine. Good. Good. Uh, goodbye, Chida. Goodbye. Come on, Giuseppina. Goodbye, quick. Mom. Quick. Bye, come. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come. Watch your step. Eh? Watch. Watch your step. Get, get in. Get in. Now, now you. Giuseppina, you not talk, eh? You just breathe and don't breathe too hard. And you, Mr. Tessic driver man, you drive a fast like anything, but don't you eat the no bombs. Which hospital? Give me the direction as we go. It'd be better if you gave me the address. The address? What did I do with the address? Uh, how do you feel, Josephina? You feel all right? What's the name of the hospital? The name of the hospital? The, the name. That's all right. I remember the name when we get there. Josette! Oh. Is it very far? Where are we now? Commonwealth and Melrose. Oh, that's a fine. Go straight ahead. Straight ahead on Commonwealth or Melrose? Both places. No, what am I saying? On uh, Melrose, uh, that's right. Right on Melrose. No, turn the left. What's the matter? Why are you making me confused for? I got enough of trouble. No more. This is the last time. No more. Young man, you take a tip from me. Do not get married. Stay single. Josephina. Josephina. How are you? Giuseppina, you wait. You wait, Garrison. Come wait. on, hurry up. Make it snappy. But what should I do? Why ask me? Am I a doctor? That place is loaded with them. Doctor, come quick. You got a customer. Doctor. Yeah. Doctor. Doctor. 
You all right, ma'am? Sure, I'm fine. What's your mother for? If not to have children. Lady. What? Wait! Doctor! Doctor! In here, Doc! In here! You don't want to. No, it's quick here! Mr. Mr. Taxine, I ask you to be my witness. Never again I go through this. Never. I sign the paper. Nurse, quick. Oh, oh Josephine. My poor Josephine. My friend, what can I do to make it up to her? I'm trying so hard, but I'm such a fool, such a fool. <laughs> There. Get on the stretcher. Careful now. <laughs> Healthiest boy I ever delivered. <laughs> it's a boy. Not a boy. Giuseppe. Hmm? Huh? Oh, wait a minute. No, no. Hi. <laughs> well, old crate, gonna be a lot of excitement down at the garage when you tell the other hacks what happened to you tonight, huh? Nice family reunion. Reunion. Reunion station. Union station. Taxi. What are you doing? Oh. Well, pick yourself up. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Lucy. I couldn't help it. If you'd have given me a chance to tell you on the phone that Mother, Father, Hilda, and George are here already. Oh, we wanted to surprise you. See? Oh, folks, I'm so glad to see you. I'm sorry I didn't... I was... Well, I nearly killed myself going to Union Station. Here they are. I'm so glad to see you, but... Well, I guess it doesn't matter anyway because uh, it's getting light and... <sighs> I'm getting sleepy, so I think I'll go to bed, huh? You don't think you're going to bed? The thought had entered my mind. With everybody here wanting to see the town, I made reservations of the Coconut Grove. Coconut no, Grove? Not... We went there the last time. Yeah. I want to see the Macombo. I want to be clean I'm... for a day. When do we find them glamour gals? Look, I'm paying for this. I ought to have something to say about it. Yeah? Well, Whose house yeah. is this? The finance company. Butt out of this, will you? Butt out. You know what I think? Say, are you going to let him talk to your wife like that? Uh, hey, buddy, you know what? Listen, you can't get tough with my husband. Hey, what time is breakfast in Hollywood? Well, how about a burlesque show? I, I, I don't want to be no, stuck I around either. I've got to be here. 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 I've